All right, class, settle down, settle down, and let's get into the lesson. So I'm sure that all of you are familiar with my previous lecture detailing every controversy in South Park history. It is my most popular lecture, and it was your homework to review this lecture before class today, so if you haven't reviewed it, say something now. You. I can see it in your eyes. You definitely haven't reviewed it, so you fail. Anyone else? Okay. You may recall from that lecture that I deemed two episodes of South Park the most controversial, and even went as far as to say that they may be the most controversial episodes of any show that has aired on television. And while I gave a brief history of those episodes, this story goes far deeper than you can imagine. These two episodes of a cartoon triggered a chain of events that led to international media coverage, threats of terrorism, and new recruiting methods for extremist groups. It even brought us right to the brink of World War III. Okay, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but as you'll see, the threat of real-world violence was very much present. Hearing all of this, you may be inclined to ask, what could they have possibly done in these episodes to warrant this response? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is the story of 200 and 201. This is that time South Park almost started a war. To start, let's break down what exactly happens in these episodes. Chances are the majority of you have never seen these episodes since they have been completely wiped off the face of the earth in terms of legal ways to watch them, as they were completely banned from television and streaming services. The only way to watch them would be to either purchase them through a specific Season 14 DVD box or to watch them illegally online. Now, I would never encourage any sort of piracy or illegal activity, which is why I must warn you not to visit SouthParkUncensored.com where they have the entire episodes available for free. Again, do not visit SouthParkUncensored.com, as that would be piracy, and piracy is wrong. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Season 14, Episode 5 was South Park's 200th episode, airing on April 14th, 2010. And to celebrate, Matt and Trey decided they were going to take a look back at South Park's most infamous moments. It would be a massive celebration of the show and all of its most famous moments, but still be an original storyline. The episode kicks off with the 4th grade class on a field trip to a fudge factory. Cartman and Kyle are doing their usual bickering, with Kyle calling Cartman fat and Cartman calling him a Jew. Kyle mentions that Cartman doesn't have a dad, which is a reference to season 1 in which we learn that Cartman's mother is a hermaphrodite and is actually his father. It is clear right from the beginning that this episode is going to contain a lot of callbacks to celebrate the show's most iconic jokes and episodes. This becomes even more clear when Butter sees an employee at the fudge factory that catches his eye. It's Tom Cruise. They point out that Tom Cruise is a fudge packer, as he is currently packing fudge. Cruise is incredibly offended by this remark, completely denying his fudge packing and threatening to sue the boys and the town for claiming he is a fudge packer. This is in reference to the episode Trapped in the Closet, which caused its own major controversy due to its critique of Scientology as well as its portrayal of Tom Cruise, who was placed in a closet for the entirety of the episode, completely refusing to come out of the closet. My previous lecture goes into a deeper look at the entire controversy, but in short, Tom Cruise was not happy about his portrayal in this episode, threatening to sue and possibly having the episode pulled from being rebroadcasted. Cruise, because of his anger from being called a fudge packer, decides he will not take this slander any longer. He calls together every single celebrity that has ever been ridiculed in the town of South Park to join together and fight back against South Park. He suggests a class action lawsuit against the town and everyone is on board with the idea. They also learn that his house is pretty hard to navigate since he needs a lot of room to store all of his clothes. Oh, just the door down the hall there, Jared. No, 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 that's a, that's a closet. Go down more. No, that's a closet too. No, Jared, that one's a closet. No, that's a cl closet. No, that's a, that's a closet. The celebrities decide to file the lawsuit, and Stan is called to the principal's office, where Randy and the rest of the adults of the town are waiting to explain to him the situation and ask him why he felt the need to call Tom Cruise a fudge packer. Randy takes Stan to apologize to Tom Cruise for calling him a fudge packer, while of course he is in the process of packing fudge. Cruise is unwilling to drop the lawsuit, unless they can bring someone to him that he has always wanted to meet. Muhammad, the prophet of the Muslim faith. That's tricky. Why is that tricky, you may ask? Well, in 2006, the two-part Cartoon Wars series was released, in which Parker and Stone wanted to show an image of Muhammad in response to the Jalans post in Muhammad Cartoons controversy, in which a Danish newspaper published comics that contained images of the Muslim prophet, leading to protests around the world. 
Some Muslim countries even experienced violence and riots related to this, and reportedly over 250 people died during protests directly related to these comics. For those that don't know, many branches of the Muslim faith prohibit any sort of depictions of Muhammad. Parker and Stone wanted to make a statement about how no topic is off-limit when it comes to humor and that either everything is okay or nothing is okay. Comedy Central, being afraid of a similar situation to this one, decided they were going to censor the image of Muhammad. This meant the entire point of the episode, that giving into terrorism is allowing terrorism to work, was essentially null and void. Knowing this, we now understand why Stan and Randy were a bit hesitant about getting Muhammad for Tom Cruise. When they give the town the news, everyone is upset, knowing how that went last time. Besides, they don't even know what he looks like or where to find him, since no one has ever seen him. This is when Stan reveals that he actually has seen him, actually a lot of people saw him, and everything was totally fine. This is a reference to the fact that in the Season 5 episode Super Best Friends, Muhammad is in the episode, kind of a lot too, and there was absolutely no issue with his inclusion back then. This episode is actually banned now, however up until Cartoon Wars when Matt and Trey pointed it out to Comedy Central, the episode was totally fine and allowed to air with no issue. After Stan reveals he knows where to find Muhammad, we are brought back to Tom Cruise's evil lair where his true intentions are revealed. While everyone assumed Cruise was just trying to end the town of South Park, his true plan was to find a way to harvest Muhammad's power. What is this power? Muhammad has a power that makes him impervious to being made fun of. What if we could harness that power? The power to not be made fun of. Since Muhammad is the only person that you can't make fun of, it only makes sense to use him to harness this power. Just then, Cartman arrives and reveals that he is there for a celebrity associate that wants to get in on the deal. Allah! Jennifer Lopez! Hey, Jen! Oh, wow! This is another callback, and I've already explained so many of them that I gotta cut some of them, but just know that Cartman's hand looks like Jennifer Lopez, and everyone believes it, but it's actually a con man named Mitch Connor who is impersonating Jennifer Lopez to steal the goo that allows Muhammad to not be made fun of. Simple stuff, really. Meanwhile, Stan and Kyle arrive at the Hall of the Super Best Friends, this being another callback to the previously mentioned episode in which all of the religious figures of the world work together to fight crime. You know, I didn't realize how much deep lore this show has until I started writing this script. Well, anyways. They realize Muhammad isn't there, and they have to convince the super best friends to get him. They begin proposing different ideas to have Muhammad be not seen and given to Tom Cruise. They get frustrated, but Joseph Smith reminds them of why this is important. You need to understand that people get very offended when Muhammad is mocked because he's a religious figure. <laughs> Buddha! They finally decide that they will place Muhammad in the back of a U-Haul truck where Tom Cruise can talk to him. Meanwhile, Tom Cruise learns from Rob Reiner that they need to harvest the goo inside of Muhammad, as that is what makes him impossible to be made fun of. This is another callback to Rob Reiner and his goo in the anti-smoking episode. Again, it's a whole thing and I don't want to get into it right now. So they construct a machine to transfer his goo to the user. So now, Muhammad is in the back of the U-Haul and ready to go, when they realize that Tom Cruise wants Muhammad in his limo. He still isn't allowed to be shown though, so they decide they need to put him in a mascot costume to pass him over. The limo arrives, and Muhammad dressed in a bear costume is walked towards the limo. But just then, Mr. Garrison reveals that he received a letter from an extremist group saying that they will bomb South Park if they give Muhammad to the celebrities. They don't believe the letter, and as they are walking Muhammad into the limo, it suddenly explodes. When they look closer at the note, it details that the group wants Muhammad for the same reason as the celebrities, his power to not be ridiculed. So exactly who are these radical extremists that don't want to be made fun of? Our time is near! Soon gingers will never be made fun of again! <laughs> oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Then we see that Cartman has walked out on Mitch Connor, saying that he doesn't want to go along with the plan anymore. This is until Mitch Connor mentions that he has info on Cartman's father. He tells him that everything about his mom being a hermaphrodite was a lie to protect a group of people, and he can help him find out who his real dad is. Hearing this, Cartman is back on board. Back with the residents of South Park, they realize they have no choice but to give Muhammad to the Gingers. Tom Cruise is incredibly upset, and he realizes that the only way to get what he wants is to fight fire with fire. He needs to threaten them with violence to get his way. And who does he call upon for such a large task? He calls on her. 
The one celebrity that hasn't appeared in this episode yet, but is more powerful and holds more hatred towards South Park than all of the others combined. Barbara Streisand. Or should I say Mecha Streisand, as she was turned into a kaiju way back in season 1. They reactivate her, and being that she has more beef with the town than anyone else, she is ready to go. Meanwhile, Cartman visits Mr. Garrison, asking to speak with Mr. Hat, another name that we haven't heard in years. It's Mr. Garrison's puppet that also has a mind of its own. Back in town, the Gingers arrive and demand that Muhammad come out of the costume to prove that it's really him in there. And we end with Mr. Hat admitting that the results of Cartman's paternity test were altered. Okay, so that's episode 200. Pretty typical South Park, lots of callbacks and references to celebrate 200 episodes, but nothing too crazy. All around, it was a good episode with an interesting cliffhanger. I sure hope it doesn't cause any sort of extreme backlash. Yeah, we probably should have seen this one coming. Shortly after the airing of 200, a post was made on the website Revolution Muslim, which was known for its extremist and fundamentalist Muslim views, often praising acts of violence committed in the name of Islam. The post read as follows, We have to warn Matt and Trey that what they are doing is stupid and they will probably wind up like Theo Van Gogh for airing this show. This is not a threat, but a warning of the reality of what will likely happen to them. The post included a photo of Theo van Gogh after he was killed by a Muslim extremist. Theo was a Dutch filmmaker who had previously made a documentary surrounding the violence against women in some Islamic societies. The post also included the addresses of Comedy Central's New York and Los Angeles headquarters, South Park Studios, and even a Colorado home owned by Matt and Trey, stating, you can contact them or pay them a visit at these addresses. So basically, the post said, listen, this is not a threat, and we're not encouraging anything, but we killed this dude for a pretty similar reason, and if we're looking at history, I mean, there's a pretty good chance something similar will happen to you guys, so fellow extremists viewing this post, do with this information what you will. Oh, and here is a list of all the possible places they could be at any given time. Again, this isn't a threat per se, just letting you guys know. Sincerely, extremist group. When this post was made, it was quickly covered by major news outlets around the world. This was the first time something like this had happened in the US, and with it being a show as popular as South Park, the media absolutely ran away with it. Major news organizations like CNN and ABC were discussing the possibility for violence and looking deeper into the story. CNN had actually interviewed the man who made the post a year before, where he claimed that he is not encouraging violence of any kind. In the same interview, he also said that the 9-11 attacks were justified, so, yeah. I mean, it definitely doesn't seem like the things he says are encouraging violence. He's just praising those who do commit violence, so I mean, that's like totally different. Regardless, this post was a really big deal, and as next week's episode was getting closer, people wondered what the show would do. Would they give in to the terrorists out of fear for their lives, or would they stand their ground as a protest against acts of terrorism? Well, in true South Park fashion, Matt and Trey did not care. They still planned on creating the episode exactly as they planned it initially, including Muhammad. In their minds, to give in to these threats would be the ultimate hypocrisy since the entire purpose of these episodes was to stand against the use of violence to censor those who think differently. They were meant to be statements about the importance of free speech and how giving in to terrorism even once will encourage others to do the same thing for the things they disagree with. In their minds, making the distinction between what is okay to make fun of and what isn't okay is a slippery slope with potentially dangerous consequences. So, Matt and Trey had made their stand, refusing to give in to the demands of terrorism and attempting to cross lines that had never been crossed before, even if it cost them their life. They were not going to back down. The only problem is, Matt and Trey don't actually control what airs. That's Comedy Central's job. And well, Let's just say they had different plans in mind. On April 21st, 2010, part two of the 200th episode special would air, simply titled 201. We are right back where we left off, with the gingers demanding to see Wait, why can't I say Well, that's because Comedy Central decided they didn't agree with the messages Matt and Trey were trying to put out and gave in to the demands of the terrorists. So, when the episode was aired, anytime they would even say the name of the Prophet of the Muslim Faith, 
it was censored. Not only that, but all images of were completely censored from the episode. So much censoring was done that if you hadn't seen the first part, you would have no clue who they were even talking about. So Comedy Central did exactly what Matt and Trey had begged them not to do and officially made the distinction of what is okay to make fun of and what isn't. So that sucks, but I guess I still have to summarize the episode so that we can better understand what the messages were supposed to be. Also, the story does not end at the airing of this episode, so stick around for the equally crazy things that happened after this episode. So, the Gingers are demanding to see and the town agrees to let him out of the suit. As it turns out, he was never in the suit, and it was really Santa Claus the whole time, because if they were going to give him to someone while being completely hidden, of course they weren't going to put the real one inside. We also get a quick cameo from Mr. Hanky. We cut to the super best friends who hear of trouble at Casa Bonita, which is another callback, Mecha Streisand is on the loose and destroying everything in her path, with Casa Bonita being a victim of the destruction. Then, Cartman arrives at the genetic lab to meet with Mephesto, the man who did the paternity test for Cartman back in Season 1. He's there to get the truth about his father once and for all. Then we go back to Mecha Streisand, who's still terrorizing the town, when she... Oh. Hmm. I think this is my favorite episode. Anyways, Stan and Kyle meet up with Kenny, who is hiding the real As previously mentioned, he is completely censored and doesn't say anything. They come up with a plan to satisfy the needs of both the gingers and the celebrities. They need to go to Mephesto's lab. The super best friends show up and take on Mecha Streisand, however, their powers are no match for hers. Meanwhile, Stan, Kyle, and Kenny arrive at the lab with They ask Mephesto to clone him so that both the celebrities and the gingers can have him. The super best friends radio back to Moses to ask for help in coming up with a plan to take down Barbara Streisand. They decide to distract her with the one thing that she cannot resist. Oh, I know. Barbara Streisand can't resist singing duets with Neil Diamond. Then they split up to go get everything they need. Back at Mephesto's lab, the gingers break in and kidnap everyone. Since they now have they radio over to Tom Cruise and tell him they're willing to share if the celebrities allow them to use the goo machine. Cartman is nowhere to be seen, and when they ask the gingers about him, they reveal that he is with the head ginger. We see Cartman in a dark room, which is then lit up to reveal a chili-themed carnival. Chili-themed carnival? Where have I seen that before? And that voice sounds pretty familiar. Wait a minute. Revenge is a dish best served. Chili! That's right, the head ginger is Scott Tennerman, the kid whose parents Cartman killed and then fed to him in chili because he scammed him out of $16.12. Meanwhile, Jesus finishes constructing the stage for the duet. Oh, I, I literally just now got the joke that he's a carpenter, so he builds stuff. Anyways. The duet with Neil Diamond and Mecha Streisand begins. Scott Tennerman then reveals to Cartman that he spent time in a mental institution after that traumatic event, where he would study Cartman's life, plotting for revenge. He even learned the name of his real father. At the Ginger Layers, the celebrities begin the process of the goo transfer. Tom Cruise is the first to go, and it's a success, and he is now completely censored himself. They can no longer make fun of Oh, come on, I can't say that now either. Scott Tennerman then brings Cartman in front of the entire town and his mother to reveal the truth. It turns out the group they were protecting was the Denver Broncos. Back with the celebrities, they are deciding who will go next in the goo machine. While arguing, the super best friends break in and begin fighting. Scott then reveals that a right tackle for the Denver Broncos had an affair with Cartman's mother, and everyone in the town covered it up. They were having a really good year, there couldn't be any distractions! He also reveals that Cartman will never be able to meet his real father, and that's when he drops a bombshell, revealing who exactly Cartman's real father is. Did I ever tell you that my father played for the Denver Broncos? No, no. That's right. Cartman killed his own father and fed him to his half-brother. Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ. The super best friends break into the lair and Seaman begins attacking <laughs> causing Stan to remark, Hey, look, Tom Cruise has Seaman on his back. <gasps> what did you say? All of a sudden, Tom Cruise is no longer censored. He doesn't understand how he can be made fun of again if he had absorbed Muhammad's goo. And that's when Kyle reveals that there is no goo, and he goes into one of his trademarked I Learned Something Today speeches. 
Now when this episode aired, this entire speech that's nearly a minute long was entirely censored. Most people assumed it was a joke by the creators, but as it turns out, there was a real speech here that Comedy Central chose to censor. The uncensored speech would be discovered years later after a 4chan user found the uncensored episode through a glitch in the South Park Studios website. The speech is a sarcastic response to the censorship of the episode, with Kyle discussing how there is no magical goo. The only true magical power is threatening people with violence. Jesus adds his own thoughts, telling the gingers that if they don't want to get made fun of, all they need are guns and bombs and people won't make fun of them. Even Santa jumps in, saying that all you need to do is instill fear and be willing to hurt people and you can get whatever you want. The irony is so strong I can taste it. We then cut to Cartman crying, completely distraught at the news of his father. When the boys come over to try and cheer him up, he reveals that he's not actually sad because of the whole murdering your own father and feeding him to your half-brother thing, but rather because his father was a ginger. Then Mitch Connor appears to encourage him, and remind him that while he may be half ginger, he's also half Denver Bronco, which is pretty cool. With that, he has to move on due to the warrants out for his arrest, and he does so in an emotional manner. Finally, the boys go and apologize to Tom Cruise, who is in tears. He says that he's tired of being made fun of, wishing that he could find somewhere to go where no one could make fun of him. The boys come up with an idea, and in one final callback, we cut to Tom Cruise on the moon with Will Ziak, and the credits roll. Immediately following the release of 201, both episodes were banned from ever airing on television again, were not allowed on the South Park Studios website, were removed from all streaming services, and can only be found in one DVD box. Every other episode of South Park containing Muhammad were also removed from air and streaming services, including the original Super Best Friends and both of the Cartoon Wars episodes. To put it lightly, Matt and Trey were not happy with the censorship in this episode. They posted a statement to the South Park Studios website detailing their disappointment with Comedy Central, stating how in 14 years they had never released an episode they couldn't stand behind. They had sent their version of the episode to Comedy Central, who decided to alter it. They ended the statement with a slightly passive-aggressive remark, stating, We'll be back next week with a whole new show about something completely different and we'll see what happens to it. Despite the threats and backlash, no action was ever taken against Comedy Central or South Park. It's hard to know whether the censorship actually prevented any violence from occurring, though I personally find it hard to believe that the type of person willing to do these kinds of things would have their mind changed by some bleeping. If you're like me, you're probably wondering what happened to the man who made the posts initially that caused the controversy. I mean, surely he wasn't arrested for this. Like, he clearly states in the post that it was not a threat, so that's like a rock-solid argument. During the CNN interview, they even brought on an expert to discuss how what he was saying is protected and that he can't be arrested. Certainly the comment on this website is very ugly, but it is certainly not specific enough to get anyone arrested at this point. Jesse Morton ended up serving only three years of his 11 and a half year sentence thanks to his work as an FBI informant while in prison. He would immediately renounce his former beliefs and upon release would work as a counterterrorism researcher at George Washington University where he would receive many accolades and praise for his work. In 2021, he would go on a podcast with documentary maker Andrew Gold and discuss his involvement in the threats. He offered a lot of insight into how these extremist groups are able to radicalize people, discussing how he never actually cared about the show depicting Muhammad at all, and neither did any of the other leaders of these radical movements. He only pretended to care because it would help him recruit and radicalize more people. In his words, I did not have any opposition to the South Park writers portraying the Prophet Muhammad, but I knew that it would be good for recruitment, so I ran with it. Let's use that to propagandize on our belief. That has become one of the most easy arguments to make for general Muslims is, look, they are insulting your prophet and your religion commands that you defend the prophet and we're the only ones that are defending the prophet. The rest of the Muslim community is staying silent, therefore we must be on the truth. Come join us. So not only was the largest controversy in television history over a cartoon drawing, but it was started by someone who didn't actually care at all. Morton would unexpectedly die later that year at the age of 43. So, what can we learn from this absolutely insane controversy? 
The biggest takeaway that I could gather from this is the importance of avoiding censorship. You see, when we try to By allowing freedom of speech, we are allowed. If you take anything away from this issue, just remember that And that is the most important lesson of all. Yeah.